With the City Double Cash Card, you get 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. That's like the joy of getting two W's on the road. We're catching the home run ball without spilling your drink. Double boom. Double the love with the City Double Cash Card. Apply now at city.com slash double cash. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. <laughs> Amin Al Hassan in with us. Uh, grateful for his presence as always, even though he looks a little different than he did last time when he appeared as Lou. Was it Vega? Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. I knew what I was going to start talking about here, but I want to tell the audience something about here about just the free reign everyone has in this place because I was going to start with something that I cannot now remember because right before they turned the microphones on for us, this is what Guillermo had said to me, and it's the only thing he said to me all morning. I did not get good morning. All I got in my ears was, Dan, do you think Stephen A. Smith could save religion? <laughs> Yes. Because, he said, if he were doing the sermon, I'd be at church every Sunday, every single Sunday. Uh, Guillermo, put on the poll. If Stephen A. Smith were doing the sermon, would he save religion? <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to talk about. So in those instances, what I have is a default that just makes fun of Stugat. So he was on. You're welcome. Wingo and Golik, and I am told uh, this is uh, Golik and Wingo. Excuse me. Whoa, that's yeah. a fun. Wow. No, that's not a fun. Wow. What do you mean? No, what? That's not. Wow. A fun. You got that's the, not you the got name it. of the show. That's that not the name of the show. Fine. They only had eight yep. million ads. Two dollars. So two names wrong. Up. Right. No, and be careful on tone. That's all I'm saying. Two dollars. Fork it up. <laughs> you want me to front you? No, no. Uh, thank you. Good, because I don't have any money on. Me. <laughs> Um, on the Golik and Wingo show, this is what's great. Stugatz is going on that show, and he's being sports take guy. And yes, and yesterday Stugatz got what did you call it? Aggregated. I guess yes, ag aggregated yes. is the verb. Yes. Uh, he he got he said something about Eli Manning, which was the most extreme point taken by anyone at ESPN about Eli Manning, and they just <laughs> slapped it on every ESPN thing yesterday. Stu Gatz yelling and screaming about how Eli Manning was overrated, and then blistering him for San Diego, and just a meandering, <laughs> just blowtorch all over the network. This is what I've always <laughs> wanted. It's not just a yes. blowtorch. You realize it's not just a blowtorch, but it's a blowtorch, and it's strapped around your hip. Like it looks as a superhero. Oh wait, I mean's got it as a backpack. The back Backpack one, yeah. yes. It's, it's just... <laughs> no, I've got it as like in the horror. I've got it as like something that it would look phallic, and it would just be. And he would oh, just, really? Yeah, yeah. And you'd have you have something out of Ghostbusters. Yeah, like like, yeah. Bag. Mine, no, no, <laughs> no. I've got you just landing on the Bristol campus. Both feet hit the ground. You put your fists on your hips, and then you just blowtorch with your hips. Yeah, all over the network. A funny thing happened because my entire life I've wanted to be taken seriously, and yesterday I was taken seriously and found myself getting upset that people were taking me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, so this happens yesterday. This is the conundrum. That is that you have found the secret conflict that roils inside the dangers of being the clown prince of sports radio. So we have the sound of Stugatz on. This new morning show ESPN has. You're scared now. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> now you guys cause Go look at Wingo, man. This <laughs> the new morning show ESPN radio has. Right. So Stugatz is uh, uh, here, and he's what's he doing? What's he being asked to talk about? I haven't heard this, Mike. Well, Stugatz uh, is continuing his uh, weekly hits on the uh, ESPN morning show. It's uh, Greeny's no longer there, but Wingo is. And if you're having Stugatz on, you're going to talk to him about what made news, and what made news was his take. I mean, ESPN put this on the on their Instagram page. That Instagram page had nine has nine million followers, so nine million people saw your awful Eli Manning take. <laughs> in which you were half serious the entire time. <laughs> All right, so here's so they go back to this well with Stugatz today, and I am told that uh, Stugatz makes three points here, and the third one is the same as the first one. <laughs> I think Eli passed up an opportunity here to, A, keep his streak alive, B, maybe he plays the whole game, and, you know, C, it kind of prolongs that streak that I think he, he cares. Ah, I said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
Did you hear the point of realization? Yes. Yes. I want to go back and revisit it. May we? Slowly, please. Uh, on Let's a transcendental yes. magic carpet journey into the past, can we please go back and revisit the moment where Stugatz got caught up in the air and wanted to call a 20-second timeout? <laughs> I think Eli passed up an opportunity here to, A, keep his streak alive, B, maybe he plays the whole game, and, you know, C, it kind of prolongs that streak that I think he he cares deeply about, and he should care deeply about it. It's an impressive streak. And, you know, and right. the and, you know, really, yeah. there's a signal that slowly travels to Sugatz's brain, which is, oh, crap, I didn't have a point C. This so this is how I imagine the inside of Sugatz's brain. There's a, it's like a, a f- office, a factory where they're coming up with the takes, right? So, hey, okay, here's point A. And then they pass it to the mouth. And the mouth says, here's point B. And they pass it to the mouth. Then point C. There's no point C. There's no point C. Just recycle A. <laughs> <laughs> they took the same machine and gave it, gave it back. Guys, he said I C. Need C. <laughs> Somebody get me C. Like out of the side of his mouth. <laughs> what are you guys doing back there? Go back to A. I love listing things. A, B, C, or one, two, three. It doesn't matter. But occasionally you get caught up in the air. Forget what the third, fourth, and fifth one. All the factory workers in his Head are Stugats. They're just mini Stugats. So, the big boss needs to see. Just, just give him a. That's the, that's the scam. The scam is he's, <laughs> big boss needs a C. All Stugatz. I've got is A's down here. All we've got is A's. They start yelling at each other. This what? isn't my fault. They're all blaming the next guy. We didn't know he was going to C. Buy, buy some time. Somebody give him the idea to say, um, and you know. <laughs> Well, but here, and so Adam Schefter spoke for everyone when he came on soon thereafter, uh, after Stugatz's appearance, and this is uh, how he said hello. With all due respect to Stugatz, I thought he missed the mark entirely. Oh, my God. <laughs> With all due respect. Stick to reporting. <laughs> With all due respect. <laughs> With all due respect, Adam. <laughs> Stick to reporting, Schefter. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you missed the mark entirely on Eli Manning. Yeah. I understand why people get mad at ESPN for the idea of we have so many places where we have to put content that when Stugat says, Eli Manning's overrated. <laughs> That they distribute it. They're distributed across all platforms so we can argue about it. There's yeah. also an editor somewhere who's just been waiting for this. Like somebody's gotta sell the truth about Eli. <laughs> like finally I found it. Who's what who said it? Some guy down in Miami. All right, put it everywhere. That's I really feel to guys. Do you know do you ever think about this? There are people who work for our company that really have no idea what happens down here. For just for whatever reason. You know, we're all sure. busy. I don't watch all the shows. Mm-hmm. They don't watch the show, they don't listen to it, so they don't know. All they know, they you know look up at a screen and yeah. uh, Stugatz, Eli is overrated. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we could use that. No. Yeah, yeah. They don't know. I'm happy about that. Don't start listening. Yeah. <laughs> so how does this work? I want to examine for a moment. So you actually felt, Mike, are you buying that Stugatz felt shame yesterday as his Eli Manning take skyrocketed all over the network? Because I'm not sure I'm buying that one. I'm trying to figure out how the uh, the factory in his brain whoa, whoa, process whoa, whoa. with whoa, all whoa. the mini Stugatzes. Hey, guys, we made ESPN. <laughs> and there's just one. There's about 15 mini Stugatzes in his head that are all excited. And there's one that's like, but am I a joke? <laughs> no, we were all happy. We all celebrated together last night. We were. I, there was. I was not upset about any of it. I was upset that people just. There's not enough people getting what we're trying to do. That's all. Right. Right. That's all. I mean, honestly, I love it. Like plastered me all over ESPN. <laughs> I don't care. I, I thought Mike was going to say there's one Stu Gatz who was jealous and felt like he should have got the. There's a, a Stu Gatz inside Stu Gatz's head. <laughs> he should have got Stugatz. the credit. And the big Stu Gatz gets all the credit. <laughs> Always. And it's, well, it's my internal frustration. <laughs> the big Stu Gatz, why does the big Stu Gatz always get all the credit? Don Libertard. The monkey's throwing barrels at you, Dan. <laughs> Stu Gatz. The monkey is throwing barrels at you. This is the Don Libertard show with the Stu Gatz on ESPN Radio. Our thanks to Amin El Hassan for being in with us today uh method man is going to join us at 11 eastern maybe with red man uh he is hot colin cowherd was idle last week so that put method man in a position where he had to have a winning week or be gone you got to beat colin cowherd as our celebrity prognosticator and he has done so now six straight weeks while smoking on that gorilla glue
<laughs> so our our prognosticators are not merely method men or celebrities or just random people picking against an expert. They're also actively high while doing it. Well, this one was. Well, and Big Boy was. He went on an that's eight right, week. That's right. Fake that's Big right. Boy right. went on smoking an eight on week gas. run right. Right. smoking gas. Wish John Lovitz would have smoked some gas. Yeah. <laughs> so Richard Lewis. This is this is where our problem lies, though, because we are sitting here. We this is an experiment. We have a random celebrity prognosticator as a goof to prove to you that nobody knows what they're talking about. And one year we won against Colin Cowherd, picking against him in Las Vegas. Last year we lost, and now we're up again, thanks to Method Man, while smoking on that Gorilla Glue. I just want you to absorb all of that. A moment of silence, please, to absorb all of that. Thank you. I've been talking to Duke basketball players on Highly Questionable recently, and I don't know what's aired and what hasn't aired in taping stuff about Coach K. But two stories have been told recently, one of which is him uh, wearing like a military helmet and like with it has the word attack on it, like some sort of 1950s Groucho Marx movie (laughs) and running into the locker room and screaming and getting them all fired up and them going out. But there was another one. I got to Can you ask somebody at Highly Questionable? Because I can't remember the player who told me we talked to Grace Allen, but I don't think it was him. It might have been. It might have been that. Coach K ran into the locker room after a brave heart moment and threw a flaming spear no, he didn't. into the locker room. Listen to me. No listen, way. listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know if this is aired yet. I need to find out if this is aired. Not to be aggregated. Threw a flaming spear into the locker room and it was meant to land in a bunch of wet towels. That the wet towels were there and the players got in there and were wondering why there were wet towels in there. And then he runs in, Braveheart throws, but then, then the wall caught fire because he missed. He missed. The, I can see that being so clunky. The, the wet towels. <laughs> he missed the wet towels and the wall caught fire. <laughs> And the way the kid told the story is that, and then we ran out there and we were all excited and, you know, we won by 30. But I was thinking to myself, man, that would have been a horrible calamity and a really national scandal of epic and historic proportions if that locker room had caught fire. I feel obligated to ask at this point. Was there also a talking dog in the story? <laughs> so you think somebody is, you guys are thinking it is a, a pull my leg situation. Dude, where did he get a spear from? Where do you buy a spear? <laughs> Wouldn't that be news? <laughs> yeah. It would have made it out. Locker room caught right. on fire. No, no, yeah. wait, because it wasn't really flames. It wasn't locker room in flames. It was just, you know, some flames go up, though. I'm sure it wasn't some irresponsible thing where Coach K is running in with something that's a total fire hazard. We've asked uh, two people at Highly Questionable whether or not this is aired. They both agreed that it has not aired yet, <laughs> but they had uh, different uh, interview subjects. One uh, gave us uh, Carlos Boozer. The other one gave us Dante Jones. Okay. Oh, I think it was Dante Jones. I think Dante Jones. Yes, it was Dante Jones. That is the one who told that story. I feel like you're really gullible. Like I'd like to challenge all your upcoming guests to just try to lie to you and see what you'd believe. <laughs> That'd be great. So wait a minute. You guys don't think it's possible. You think Dante Jones is simply making up a story on television. Damn. Go ahead. Let me hear this. Let me hear this about Coach K. Okay, let's start. Let's start with where do you get a spear from? How does he know how to throw a spear? Well, were they at FSU? Ah. ACC conference rival. What? All right. Why don't we yeah, call Dante uh, Jones? Is, to, guys, you know Dante Jones is thirty six. Right, hold on. Why would Dante Jones tell a lie? Allison, call Dante Jones. I want to now talk to him about this on air, and I want to ask him all your follow up questions. I want to ask him all your follow up questions. Chris, what it has to do since you asked is a. It happened many many years ago, according to Dante Jones. I think we would have known about it by now, and I don't think Florida State was an option back then for Duke. I'm not certain. No, they've when, been in the ACC for a long time. No, That's no, where you yes, get a flaming sure, spear. Sure, but Dante Jones was like on a national championship contending Duke team. And Florida State was not that good. Well, they beat this team by 30, which would fit the description. Okay, I am perfectly happy. 
to have Dante Jones on the air and support his story while you guys call him a liar. Absolutely. And you can ask him all the questions you think, like about what's true and what's not true and apply all your cynicism to him because all I'm doing is repeating a great story. I, first of all, no, you're believing a great story. That's a big difference. You can just say, hey, he <laughs> says this. I think it's a crock. But you're like, no, no I'm also, Coach K did this. I, okay, I am also believing it. And the dog was it. talking. It was, I, know it, <laughs> I know it didn't know what it was saying, but it was saying those words. Did you it, see that shark during the hurricane? <laughs> oh, yeah. You oh, you were that fall. guy? He always falls for the sharks swimming guy? in the street. You the thought malls. there was a shark <laughs> swimming in the Houston? Ocean Boulevard? No, no. I fell for something else, and Mike sent me that back saying, and do you also think there's a shark during the hurricane? It was something else I fell for, and Mike threw that in my face. And now it's, and of course, it's become Dan falls for the shark in the hurricane. <laughs> so, and the next time we go to this, it'll, I'm going to be the world's most gullible person, just falling for the world's most obvious scam. Well, and, and the, I, what do you mean those Nigerian people aren't desperate who are sh- sending me emails? I've been sending... Why haven't they f- solved this problem? I've been sending them millions. <laughs> we, in the local hour, we talked about reputations and, and how they're hard to overcome. You built this reputation. We also talked about ruining a reputation, like Greg right? Cody ruining right? his, yes. his legacy by being on this show. Your legacy is going to be... Extremely gullible man. Okay, but I'm. I believe. First of all, put it on the poll. Do you believe uh, Dante Jones's bogus story? Go ahead and put it on the poll at Levitard Show. I think it has a lot to do with Coach K, though. Raindrop. Like I just can't see it. Like, if it was if Rex Ryan him, or Jim Harbaugh. I believe it. Right. I believe it. Yeah. Are you guys not aware that there? Was... I'm aware, but I just wanted to continue on with this uh, conversation. Something playing there. Yeah. I realized. Don Lebatard. Greg Robinson with us. Are you distracted? Because this happens sometimes with you when you come on with us. You, uh, I, I feel like you've got a little bit of ADD um, or during radio interviews, maybe only. Are you distracted? What's happening? Are you are you doing that Pineapple Express thing where sometimes you float off because you're smoking that Chiba? Stugats. No, I'm not distracted. Okay, very good. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I want to ask you guys something that I have stumbled upon here that I have found amusing. Amin Alhassan in with us, and we're always grateful for his presence. We will dig deep on some basketball stuff before we leave here today. But I love the idea that... When you come after a sports town, when a guy gets on television, a gas bag gets on television, and says, I don't believe in this team or I don't believe in this team's player, that that rabid fan base will come after you. And I have been saying pretty consistently on behalf of America here for a while, nobody wants Wisconsin in the Final Four. Get Wisconsin the hell out of here. And Wisconsin is like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Like nobody, nobody gets mad at me, and I haven't seen like a fan base like I like Wisconsin's reaction is that yeah we understand why you don't like us we're always the same team we get it you got a good point Dan yeah but, we're but boring is yep. it because they're polite is it, but they they nobody's coming after me like those Cleveland people are crazy the Cleveland yeah. people when you come after any one of the Cleveland teams they will they're they're rabid their identity is tied up in it but the Wisconsin people are like eh. you know what it is I think because. I don't want to say they're not long-suffering, but they have some sort of recent success to cling on to, right? Packers were pretty good. We won a Super Bowl recently. We won a Super Bowls with Brett Favre or whatever. Um, so you kind of you got to let go, right, as opposed to people in Cleveland who up until 2016 literally had nothing. They lived their entire lives just being losers all the time. So it just breeds this loser. Then again, I don't know, Boston, they win a lot, and they're still I, I think there. No, I just think Wisconsin fans have similar doubts. Well, I, think they're self, I think they're self aware. They don't know if they're any good. I think they're self aware. They're the rare self aware yes. fan that's yes. not sort of influenced by hope, but instead by dis- by disappointment. And it makes good points, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. Right. That's what I was trying to <laughs> do. I don't want to watch us either in the final four. <laughs> but that I, it was such a weird reaction. I can't think because I'm always expecting blowback. My father will say Jacksonville doesn't smell too good, and then we'll get hit with a bunch of Jacksonville civic pride. You been to Jacksonville? Yeah. Yeah, it, my the, favorite. The, the smell has changed since you were here. Okay, <laughs> thank you. But what I'm saying is, anytime you say something like that, what emerges is usually hostility. I've not heard from un- no I, one. I spoke to a television camera on ESPN at 4:30 yesterday, and I said to that television camera and any one of the people watching, "You don't want Wisconsin in this Final Four, and you know it. You in in your right. living room, you." eating Cheetos with your hand in your underwear, and no one disagreed with me. 
granted, they have no way of disagreeing with me because I'm just talking to a camera. Well, but usually do. you'll get it they on do. social you media, get it on right? Social media. Right. But right. in real time, they don't have. Yeah. I taped it three hours earlier. Yeah. By the time they were complaining about it, I was, I was deep into the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Crime had already committed. <laughs> but deep. Deep. By the time they started complaining. No, but I didn't hear any complaints. Nothing from Wisconsin. I. And I'm wondering, Guillermo, put it on the poll, is Wisconsin the most self-aware fan base? The univer- are University of Wisconsin fans the most self-aware fan base? Because I can't remember another time where I've ripped the city or a team or a, a, a player that that city cares about, and what has met me is like, yeah, you're right. They don't want us there, right? Like, that's usually, see, the national media bias. Right, BSPN. They usually do that whenever. Maybe no one's listening in Wisconsin. That's true. That's the other thing. What are our ratings up there? The last I checked, we were on in Milwaukee. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I know, but it, it, you sit on HQ anyway. So. Yeah. Right. Well, so, maybe no one's watching in Wisconsin. Well, that's what I'm saying. What are the numbers? Can we get? The, can we get that? Madison's a chill hipster town. Yeah, man. I mean, on that gas up there. I mean, think I think he speaks for a lot of America when silently a moment ago he just sort of picked up a. Uh, a sheet of paper that was in the show sheet and looked at the headline, which just was Matt Lauer had a lock on door in office that he could close secret locking door. And Amin is just like reading that headline and he's just throwing up his hands and his shoulders. Like, what is the matter? Like what? what is happening? What is happening here with what is the matter with Matt Lauer and all of these deviants? Like you're going to have electronically, you're going to lock a woman in the room like, what the hell, man? So this is the part where I get in trouble because for the, for for a moment, I can suspend a lot of disbelief about a lot of stuff, right? Like, oh, let's just assume that this happens, right? That it's as common and widespread as it looks like it's happening. There's harassments and, and over-the-top stuff. I can almost accept that this is the world that we live in. But then a detail comes out like, Pleasuring yourself in a potted plant or having a secret button that locks it. Like, why? Why does it go that far? Like, what? There's, is there no part where, like, ah, you know, I'm pretty good with this level of misogyny that I'm doing right now. Like, he's got to go above and beyond. The logistics. How does that conversation go? Guys, is guys. It- I need, I need, I need a button so I can lock the door. Yeah, is there a handyman around the office? Office that goes to Matt Lauer. You know what? I, 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 yeah, I mean, Matt Lauer gets whatever he wants. Yeah, no, it's a simple what? conversation. You know, is I, it in the contract? Yeah, he gets whatever he wants. But let's let's do it this way, though. I think what it might be is this. You know how Joe Johnson has signed all of these contracts, and Joe Johnson now has like. Uh, a vault in his house where you've got to put a f- his fingerprint yes. on it to get into where it is all of his shoe collection is. Yes. Maybe Matt Lauer was like the Joe Johnson of misogyny. Like, watch what I do here. I'm going to have a fingerprint that locks a door so I can be more expert efficient in how it is I'm going to traffic in sex crimes. 28 mil a year. Like outdoing the other, the other like, people like, who are doing this? Do. Yeah, like, I gotta, watch I, what I, I do. Yeah, I got a button underneath my desk. What do you got? <laughs> uh, Har- Harvey's out here just merely. Yes, yes. <laughs> Harvey's out here in front of everybody. He's never locking the door. But to Amin's point, because I was watching a lot of the coverage last night, and I was watching it with my wife, and she just she says to me, why would these guys, Matt Lauer, have to go to these lengths? If he weird, wants to yeah. be with someone all else, all he has to do is just be with someone else. Uh, and, that's, and that is where it comes into the what uh, a lot of people talk about, what rape is about, is not about I want sex. Yeah, it's not about desire. The power. Yeah, it's, power. it's not about, oh, I can walk and have any woman. It's about, no. I'm going to have a woman that she has no choice but to be with me. And that's and that's that's the, the sickness, the illness of it. And obviously the details start coming out now you, as you knew they would. And just the incredibly brazen behavior to give somebody a sex toy, for example, y- you wonder. And what goes through their mind? Because Matt Lauer happened after Charlie Rose. When they're discussing Charlie Rose in, in the studio because it's a news story, what's going through his mind? Does he even know? No. Does I, he realize? I, I, I don't think, I think they think, oh, that's, oh, Charlie, how terrible, right? That's not me. Oh, I'm Matt. It's funny when the, I get, you know. The thing that was really interesting and tricky to watch for me last night is like a month ago, Lauer just grilling Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. Just grilling him for the same stuff that Matt Lauer apparently was doing. We don't, like know, we don't know what Bill him. O'Reilly did. There is, there is, uh, man, I, I don't, um, 
I don't take joy in the misery of others. And as I watch some of this, I understand why so much of, it, of America is like looking at this and burn Hollywood burn. Like, man, you people who have been lecturing me for so long on how I'm supposed to behave. And if you're Bill O'Reilly, if you're in his camp and you're like, and you had the audacity to sit in front of Bill O'Reilly with all of your hypocrisy and hit him with all of those questions about behavior that you too knew you had bones in that closet. And then, man, is it, it's, is it variety? Variety was about to publish this piece. This was, this wasn't NBC getting out ahead because one person came with a viable claim. This was NBC doing this because they knew what variety was coming with and it was going to be exhaustive. They'd been reporting it for two months and it was going to be damning. And they're like, let's fire him to, to save face. But they, they knew it was coming. They may not have fired him if they did not know that that was coming. Two different media outlets. Variety, and I want to say was the Times. They were both working. Well, now, but now, now this is the thing, though, because this is going to win Pulitzers. The reporting on all of this stuff is going to be the stuff that wins Pulitzer prizes, and so now the media is going to descend on this. Like this isn't. This is still just starting. How many Pulitzers can you give out in one year? Look at all these stories that come out in the last six weeks, mm-hmm. right? Don Lebatard. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Stugats. Thank you, Google. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. It was really nice of Amin during the break as I was cursing myself. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Amin was very soothing. Dan, people make mistakes. These things happen. I'm bleep, 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 uh, because I read the wrong thing headed into that advertisement. And the reason I was so bothered by it and bothered by myself is because it can be hard to sponsor our show. And I appreciate every one of the sponsors who sponsor our show because it could be a difficult ask because of some of what we do. And I just read the wrong read. I read Dollar Shave Club and then Stugatz read Metro PCS because he's never listening. Nope. So um, so it was my fault, and I want to do this better and right now for the client. Well, now it feels like my fault. No, no, no. Well, uh, you didn't help matters. You just weren't listening. I like wasn't. That, yeah. I mean, Sorry. But that's you being in character. Right. I'm not apologizing to you. I'm apologizing right. to Metro right. PCS. Right. So yeah. let me do this better. Metro PCS has a great deal today. We know that. An Amazon Prime account is valuable around this time of year. With Metro PCS, you can get that and a phone Tell them, Stugat. It is a great deal, Dan. Switch to Metro PCS and enjoy Amazon Prime for a whole year. That's an entire year when you get a free Samsung Galaxy J7 Prime and an unlimited LTE plan. You'll enjoy thousands of movies, TV shows, music, free two-day shipping, and much more. Don't miss out on this incredible holiday deal. Metro PCS, wireless figured out. During congestion, a fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs a month may notice reduced speed. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See stores for details and terms and conditions. One year of Amazon Prime has a $99 value. Yay! Man, you know what? Let me pull back the curtain. Beyond just the the incongruence of the the read earlier, Mike also noticed that Stugatz wasn't putting enough inflection and intonation and you're so coachable man like just yeah. one time he just had to tell it to you and and the read was just so much more entertaining all right but everyone's happy now right and if you uh, let me tack on some more if you go and and sign up for this metro pcs deal you get amazon prime a- according to my twitter mentions you can order a spear from amazon prime <laughs> so if you're coach k or a coach and you want right. to allegedly like rile up the troops <laughs> go to amazon prime on your metro pcs phone mm-hmm. download it uh order the spear set it on fire get some wet towels because <laughs> because of course anytime i'm dealing with pyrotechnics I need wet towels. Who doesn't? That's the safest thing that I can have <laughs> among children who have been put in my care. As a, I mean, yeah, not children, but teens. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so and then let's just run out the locker room as as the flames engulf. If you don't know what Amin is talking about, earlier in the show. If you're just joining us, you are very confused. He, if you're just joining us, he uh, Amin was incredulous because I was saying that Dante Jones had told me a story about Coach K running into the locker room throwing a spear after like a Braveheart type video or something. Uh, there were wet towels on the floor. The spear missed the wet towels, and then the wall caught some flames, and the guys ran out of the locker room. And Amin doesn't believe the story, and I do. And I'm like, why wouldn't I believe that story? Why wouldn't I believe that story? So so was this a home game or a road game? Man, I don't you know. Because here's my I thing. I didn't ask a lot of follow-up but, but here, questions. Exactly. I was too busy, I was too busy, <laughs> I was too busy laughing. I didn't. 
I didn't care about the merits of his story. I was too busy laughing. I mean, it's nowhere on the internet. I have searched what everywhere. Facility, no, let's just assume they have a fixer and the fixer kept it quiet. What facility in America would allow you to light something on fire inside a closed it space? Seems to, it, it seems like really bad judgment. It really does, especially when that wall catches fire. Cayman Indoor Stadium is like a dump. That's, by the way, one of my favorite moments on this show was when he was on, and I wanted to ask, so when are you guys tearing down Cameron and getting a new new facility? And you guys stopped me from asking that question. But you're going to allow this dude to t- tell a story about a, a flaming spear? Well, and some wet towels? We're gonna well, that's play, interesting. We're going to play, the, the in, in the next segment, we are going to play for you. Uh, maybe we'll play for Method Man. We're going to play in the next segment or soon. What happened? I didn't hear. What was his joke? What was his joke? What did he say? What was the joke I rolled over? Well, Amin was complaining that uh, we didn't let him ask the Cameron Indoor question, but you asked Dante Jones about the Flaming Spear Coach K story, and I said that's because Dan's question was interesting. I mean, it's a bad interview. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Hey, your favorite TV when did you show creator. Fat Albert. What just happened there? A slow Fat Albert. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> what just happened? Hey. Why are you hey, hey, hey? Your favorite TV show runner of all time, the guy that created Breaking Bad. He loved my question, oh, and he hated your question. It was Vince Gilligan, and what are you asking me? Asking him a Gilligan Island question? Yes. Is that, oh, for the love Re- of Gilligan God. Gilligan Island reboot? That, that's in keeping. Wait, Vince Gilligan, one of the great television writers of our time, and Amin doesn't know who he is, so he asked him, hey, your last name, do you get a lot of Gilligan's Island jokes? He loved that question. He loved it. He lit up. He was, he was answering nice. all your questions, blah, 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 and then he heard my question. Like, ah. I've confirmed that it was a home game, wow. this Dante Jones Flaming Spear story. Wow. How did you confirm this? Through HQ producers. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, we're going to get Dante Jones before the end of the show because I want to know what's true and what's not true. But coming up next, Method Man is probably going to be smoking marijuana and he's probably going to be beating <laughs> Colin Cowherd because that's what he does. Method Man owns Colin Cowherd. P owns him. <laughs> Method Man, Gorilla Glue, next.